Praise the Lord, whom all, from whom all blessings flow. My name is Sean Henry Scott Sr. Today is 7-7-2021. 7 7 2021. That sounds prophetic within itself. Two sevens and 21, which is three sevens, which is three is 20, Trinity. Anyway, um, as I've been advertising, we're going to uh, deviate from the series Exodus. And we'll continue on the series Exodus this Sabbath, um, unless the, the Holy Spirit intervenes again. Um, I was sharing how the Lord had given me a word, and I said there's a prophetic word. And I say it's prophetic in nature because it is not the word that I was going to originally preach or share, but it's the word that I received confirmation for today that somebody spoke into me yesterday. Um, I'll get into that after I pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ for this ministry, this platform, this time, and this space. Father, that everything you've done and everything you're doing, Lord Jesus. We thank and praise you for your anointing. I thank you for keeping me faithful for a few things. In doing so, Father God, you said I will be ruler over many. Thank you for your healing power, Father God. Any time that I feel like a little weary or a little ill, Father God, I'm reminded of your healing power, Father God. In the scriptures where it says all things work together. And I know there's more to that scripture, but I know it's working together because I love God and I'm called, I'm the called. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus for this word, Lord Jesus. I thank you for using my brother Benny Burrell, Father God, to annoy me until this word just jumped out and said, preach me. And I pray, Father, that I do this word justice and, and deliver it to somebody who's in desperate need of hearing a word from you. Like we were sharing in the series Exodus in Psalms 107.20, it says, You sent your word and you healed them and saved them from their destructions. The word is powerful, and it can do exactly what God said it can do if you believe in the name of Jesus Christ. We love you and we praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So that today we'll be speaking, like I said, we'll be deviating from the series because I went and visited some a friend yesterday on my way to Princeton, West Virginia, and um, he's a preacher. And when preachers get together or believers get together, um, we we talk, and then out of our conversation, holy conversation, things come out. That's why I love coming together where two or three gathered. Jesus is in the midst of us. He's he's operating within us when we're together. And we was talking, and he was just so adamant about this word proximity. And I was like, Benny, why are you bothering me with this word? He just kept, he kept saying, no, 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 it's all about proximity. And I'm like, man, get away from me, basically. I'm like, why are you bothering me? And um, at that time, the word had no real true meaning to me at all, whatsoever. I mean, it was in one ear and out the other, basically. And I was just meditating on what I believe God wanted me to speak on today in particular dealing with the Exodus series and I started to meditate on that and then early this morning um, I don't even want to talk about my night but early this morning that word came right back to me <laughs> proximity and the Lord was like I need you to share that word because I've been giving you scriptures throughout the night because I didn't really sleep very well at all I've been giving you scriptures throughout the night which had led me to the understanding of that word and how he wanted me to share it with somebody because it's so important that when we believe and understand when God speaks a word, he's not speaking it to hear himself be heard. He's speaking it. And like I said in Psalms 107.20, um, he, he, he's healing us and he's delivering us from our destructions. And I sincerely believe with the scriptures that I was sharing leading up to this word that people were on, some people were on the verge of making some decisions and choices that are not God ordained. And it's important that we understand this word that God is speaking right now. Not because Sean is speaking it, because it is never about me. But I will do whatever God has called me and created me to do shamelessly. I don't care. I'll be a fool for Christ. But anyway, the word is proximity. You know, I'm not one of them folks that's gonna hold it, hold the word to the end of what God got has me for me to share as if I, it's a movie. I'm gonna tell you what the word is. The word is proximity, P-R-O-X-I-M-I-T-I. And it means nearness in space, time, or relationship. Nearness, nearness or closeness. In time, space, 
or relationship. And the Lord gave me two places in scripture to help you understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. But the word is proximity. And I can tell you briefly what the Lord showed me as he was ministering to me with his word is that the summation of everything I'm going to tell you comes to the fact that you need to be where God has placed you. There are divine appointments that God has set up for us to meet and make for us to receive the things that he has for us. But if you are not at the place, at the time, and you're not near to Jesus, when that divine appointment is supposed to happen, you will miss God. See, I believe what, what happens sometimes is we take God for granted. Oh, if I miss him, I'll catch him on the next time around. I'm going to share these scriptures with you and you're going to see that sometimes there ain't no next time around for people. You have to be where God has uh, commanded you to be. And what you need to understand, don't let that word command bully you. He's commanded us a blessing. God literally commands for his people to be blessed, healed, delivered. I mean, that's, he commands. He's not making suggestions. The enemy is, has no power. The devil, Satan, has no power. Zero. So when we allow him to operate in our lives in any way, shape, or fa fashion, and we need to get him out, we need to get back to the word and understand what God commanded. So he didn't make suggestions. We find our first example to the word proximity in um, the gospel according to Matthew chapter 9. And I'm a little weak in my voice because, like I said, I was, um, I had to get something out of me, you know, all last night, you know, it was, it's been, it's been, and I called one of my prayer partners and they was praying and, and they said, yeah, it's, it's an attack. He said, you know, you know, I knew my sickness wasn't unto death. I know, my, I know enough about myself and my spiritual walk when things are going on that's not supposed to be going on. And I'm not, anybody know me know I'm not a sickly person, so when something is allowed, something is going on and I've been doing a lot of interceding as of late last last week and you know I want you to keep my neighbors in prayer within the last month they've lost three family members to death you know so I want you to keep them in prayer so that may be part of the reason why God has had me up the whole week just praying and interce interceding and just crying out to him you know on behalf that's what we're here to do so our first example of proximity which once again means nearness in space, time, and relationship can be found in the gospel according to Matthew chapter 9. And we're going to begin in verse 18. And the reason this wise, While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshipped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come and lay thy hand upon her, and she shall live. Verse 18. And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. One thing I always am mindful of when reading scripture is how God ordains. We know the Bible says the steps of good men are ordered by the Lord. So we know God's steps, Jesus' steps was ordered. So one thing I'm very mindful of when reading scripture is how his steps was ordered. You know, it may seem like happenstance, circumstance, but that's not the case. The things that we see Jesus doing, trust and believe, they were already ordained before the foundation of the world. None of the people he came in contact with, none of the things that happened, I mean, if an apple was the fire of a tree when Jesus was walking past that tree, it was supposed to happen because of who he is. So we need to understand that when we're talking about Jesus, you need to keep him in his proper place when dealing with divine and prophetic things. He's sovereign over everything. The air we breathe, the rain that falls, uh, anything and everything, you have to keep God in his proper perspective when receiving the, 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 the engrafted word of God and his power. And Jesus arose in verse 19 in Matthew chapter 9, and Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. And that's another reason why we got to follow Jesus. Because when his steps are ordered, our steps are ordered when we're following him. Verse 20, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. 
Now I'm going to use the word proximity in the context for her. Out of everything that we see going on, and as many times you've probably heard this message preached concerning the one with the issue of blood, this is one of the examples that God gave me. If she had not been where she was, when she was, she would not have got her healing. That's, that's the word for somebody. You need to be, God is going to tell you, and you're going to feel it very strong in your spirit. He's going to tell you where you need to be, when you need to be there. I mean, there's a divine appointment that's been set up for you. If you do not make that appointment, there is no chance, there's a chance you might not get another appointment. And I can say that because it's the word that God has given me concerning proximity. You know, he has set that up for you and you can't take it for granted. And Jesus arose and followed him and so did his disciples. In verse 20, and behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, now put, put, you need to put yourself in her shoes. She said within herself. In other words, she ain't talking to nobody. Ain't no gossip group. She ain't on the internet. She ain't talking to a bunch of people. She said within herself, if I may but touch his hem, I shall be whole. Now, since she's speaking within herself, and we know even in scripture how the Bible lets us know that Jesus read the thoughts of the Pharisees. Now, we, the Bible reveals that to us. So, he, him being who he is already know what's going on within her. So this is, this is another reason why it's, it's a divine appointment. Because there are things that's going to be said within us. In other words, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to us and tell us, you need to be here or you need to be there. We're talking about proximity. You need to be where God is telling you to be. There's something there for you. And I don't know who in particular God is speaking to. I never know. I'm on the internet talking and I got people in Africa and in India and in, in Asia and all these different places. Because my son plays basketball all over the planet. And I've picked up some people following me from his, his travels. It's amazing how God does things. But i got people all over the planet who watch these things and listen to these things. And you need to understand what the Spirit is saying to the church. And behold, a woman which was diseased with the issue of blood 12 years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. So look what look what's gonna happen. Look look at her expectation from her divine appointment. She's already realizing and recognizing that if I touch to him his garment, basically if I make this divine appointment, if I get to the proximity, if I get to the place where I'm supposed to be, I am going to be made whole. That's what she's saying. And, and I've said it plenty of times, especially when I was a church pastor, that when you come to church, your attitude is to be blessed. Your attitude is to be blessed or, excuse me, or a blessing to somebody. Excuse me. I'm at the tail end of this little issue. So we need to understand that when God orders your steps to a specific place for a season and a reason, your attitude should be like hers. And she said, Within herself, if I may touch his garment, I shall be made whole. That's your attitude. Out of all the years of me being a minister and a preacher, and especially during outreach, I can always tell who's going to get their deliverance, who's going to get their healing, who's going to get their breakthrough. Because their attitude is right. They're not looking at me as the person that's going to do what they're asking for. They're just looking at me as a person who can touch and agree with them according to Matthew 18, 19. Because of the word that God may speak to the person who's speaking, their faith is increased, to, to, to meet them, and their faith is increased, and they're meeting the person, and they're agreeing on what the word says. For she said within herself, if I may but touch the image of garment, I shall be made whole. I shall be whole, excuse me. 22, but Jesus turned him about, and when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the Bible says, and the woman was made whole, from that hour, I'm not gonna get too more, too much further into that. This is not. I'm not gonna be on here long, because like I said, he gave me a word, and that's what it is. It's a word, proximity. There's a place where you need to be. And another thing, God was speaking to me through through the night last night, is that because of the virus, a lot of people have used that as an excuse to show their faith, their, their lack of faith. They have not been faithful. They stopped going to church. They stop tithing. They stop doing all the things they need to do to be who God has called them to be. 
And I was in a seat and praying last night, and, and, and I shared the word after I did that. The Lord was showing me, he's like, they need, people need to get back to being faithful. A whole lot of folks. I, I talked to some ground, some, some seasoned folks. I don't go to church no more. What, are you crazy? Not only are you not going, you're not using that as an excuse not to tithe. The devil was tricking people. Speaking to him from the scripture, let's go to my second and last example. It can be found in Genesis. We're going to be talking about Adam real quick. Adam and Eve. Whew, man, I ain't got my strength back yet. You can tell it's not in my, in, in my, in my voice. It's coming to... I was determined to get good enough so I can share this word that God gave me to share. But a lot of times when I can't preach with my voice, I will type and share the stuff. Just got to read it. And my writing is kind of not good, but... My preaching is not of eloquent speech, <laughs> but it does have the power to. Anyway, Genesis chapter two. We're gonna. The first uh, word I want to share is out of two seven. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Reason why I read that first, once again, we're talking about proximity, which means nearness in space, time, and relationship. God placed Adam where he wanted him to be. He placed him there. Like I said earlier, the steps of a good man or woman, generically speaking, were ordered by the Lord. You need to be where God has placed you. I know people who have moved out of emotions, they got in their feelings, they got upset. I'm talking about left churches or got mad at whatever the case. I remember, for example, I was at a church ministry and I was serving for a season. And there was some stuff that went on that, that wasn't really, you know, becoming of a, a ministry. And people looked at me and was like, Sean, what are you going to do? I said, God didn't tell me to go nowhere. Well, what these folks is doing... I understand it's not the way it's supposed to be done, but until God tells me to move, I am not moving. I'm going to continue to do my duties. I'm going to continue to do what God has called me to do, but I am not going anywhere. And so it's so important that when stuff go on, like what we're about to see happen in Scripture here, that you don't allow situations and circumstances to cause you to be disobedient. Like I just said a minute ago, that because of the virus, Churches closed, and people used that as an excuse to not go back to church or go to church and be faithful. And I was sharing on the internet, typing that you still need to sanctify the time that you used to go to the building in your home if you're following on the internet. In other words, for example, when I was in the house with my children, and, and if that was the case, I would put the TV up or the screen up, and we would sit there with no cell phones or whatever and watch the sermon as if we was in service. That's what the Lord was showing me. People need to sanctify that time and allow the Word of God to do what the Word of God is meant to do. And when you uh, when you handle it right, you will get right results. The Lord was showing me people just, you know, on their phones, watching their pastor, and they'll pause it, go get some popcorn, and eat some junk. And no, that, no, that's not the way we do it. No, you sit there as if you're in service because you need to handle the Word of God correctly. Stop treating it like it's just something that, that, that's on TV while you surfing around. And yet people wonder why they don't have the results the Bible said we can have. Because you're not handling the word of God correctly. When God speaks, when he has put you in a position to hear a word from him, you need to act accordingly. we just seen how the woman acted when she touched him in Jesus' garment. She had already said within herself. Now, it wasn't about being in no nice air-conditioned building, all cushiony with an altar call, and had some men behind her to catch her. She out there in the, the dirty streets, on her face, crawling, breaking the law. Because it was against the law to touch a, 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 a kosher rabbi before a high, high Sabbath. You, could go to, you can get stoned to death for that, especially if you had an issue of blood. Back to Genesis 2, 7. And Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So we wasn't, we was an inanimate object before God breathed the breath of life and, and man became a living soul. And I share with people all the time, obviously, that we are 
spiritual people, spiritual beings living a natural experience, not natural people living a spiritual experience. Get it backwards. We're going to be, our soul is going to be live eternally somewhere, not our flesh. So you need to understand that. And the Lord breathed, once again, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man. You know, that's why he had me use that example, because he put him there. He didn't ask Adam what he wanted to do. Oh, you want to do a puppet ministry? You want to do a biscuit selling ministry? You want to sell candy? Or He put him where he wanted him to be. You need to be where God has placed you. You need to do what God has commanded you to do. When people try to come up with their own, I mean, I've, my, I've been doing this and walking this walk long enough to know that when something is of God and when, well, I've always wanted to do that. I'm like, wow, that is nowhere in the Bible. How you just didn't came up with something for you to do that you want to do, that you like to do. We're talking about proximity. God is, this is, this is what's about to happen. This word that I'm giving you today, that's why it's breaking news. And that's why it's a prophetic word. This is a word for right now, proximity. Thanks to my brother Benny Burrell who, who spoke it into my spirit. And um, the, the, the Holy Spirit this morning confirmed it. It's something I need to share. Because God is about to do something. But in order for you to receive what he's going to do, you need to be in a proper place. If you're not in a proper place, when God does what he wants to do for you, you will not get it. I can say that flat-footed, not backing up, and I don't care who you think you are. I don't care who you are watching. Our chief, the chief apostle, whatever. This, the, the word is the word. The word is for everybody who can hear it and receive it. We know when the word is for us. Now we're going to skip over to verse 3, and then we're going to be done. And we're talking about, once again, proximity. And I'm going I'm to you know, share a little bit at the end. Now this is why it's important for us to be where God has placed us. Chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which the Lord God hath made. Yes, the Lord God made the serpent. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Now there's been a, a whole lot of times in my life where I've been used to minister to women. And it seemed like they got a whole lot of mouth. Just yak, 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 yak. I'm like, you know what? I know God sent me to speak to you. But you're doing more talking than me. So I'm trying to figure out if God, me as the mailman, and God has sent me to share something with you, you need to shut up. And that may sound harsh and rude and crude, but y'all got to understand the times we're living in now. People are dying physically and spiritually because they're not, they're not heeding to the word of God. Like I said, they're not using or heeding to the word of God correctly. And God got some people out who, who love people enough who will tell them what they need to hear, not so much what they want to hear. Oh, that's not godly. Uh, Jesus wouldn't speak like that. You might want to read your scripture. Because what did he tell that woman? Who, who, who was talking about the crumbs from the master's table? Another sermon, another time. Another servant was more subtle than the beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Proximity. She didn't have no business being where she was. It's not about point and blame. We just sharing what the scripture is saying. And the woman said unto the serpent, Proximity, what are you doing talking to the serpent? I got a lot of female friends throughout my life, and, and a lot of them, when they fell into to the hands of wayward, whoremongering men, um, it started with a conversation. Hey, how you doing? Oh, that's a nice dress. Oh, I like your hair. It started with, but you already knew in your spirit. I'm talking about Holy Ghost filled women. You already knew in your spirit that man was up to no good the second he put his eyes on you. I don't care if he was in Walmart, the gas station. Uh, look, I used to be that dude, so I know I'm not going to play no games with you. We just look for an end. We just look for an opportunity. You know, let me pump her gas for her, or let me carry her groceries, or let me, even if she got a ring on. And I'm, I'm just being the truth. You can cry and kick and scream all you want to because you know what it is. Like I said, I've, I've ministered, and my ministry has been to like women to a certain extent. Because the Lord showed me how when I was out there being a bad boy, how he would use me on the flip side when I got in. And that's generally how it starts. I used to ask them after they done fell and sin and after they done got all tore up from the floor up and want to curse the devil and curse all men and, and curse the planet. I'm like, hold on. Did he take it from you or did you give it to him? 
And why was you talking to him in the first place? You're the one that's supposed to be holy. You should have known from you should have known from Rip that he was up to no good if you was where you were supposed to be doing what you were supposed to do. And it goes for men too, because there's a lot of times where I'll be out doing my thing and women will make little comments and say little things. And I, and I know that ain't no good. I just shake my head and get on by my business. I don't even entertain it. Because I know that they're not, they're not, they're not what God has for me. I'm not supposed to be entertaining that. We're talking about proximity. And the woman said unto the serpent, got no business talking to him, we may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I've had women tell me, well, they need ministry too. I'm a minister to him. I'm like, yeah. So you're talking to that man you ain't supposed to be talking to because you're ministering to him. And, and you think I'm stupid. I wasn't always a preacher. <laughs> I used to be a whoremonger. I used to chase women. I used to be that dude. I play dumb. I do whatever she wanted me to do. As long as ultimately I get what I want. God is trying to help somebody get delivered from their nonsense and realize what he has for them and what's coming. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, verse 3, but a fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. You know what she just did by telling the serpent what God said? She just proved she knew the scriptures. The only commandment they had in the garden, she just proved to everybody that she, she confessed with her mouth that I know what God said. And that's how we are. We know what the scripture has told us to do. We know what the scripture has told us not to do. So what's the problem? You will be without an excuse when you stand before Almighty God when he knows you know the scripture and you willfully uh, broke, broke the commandments. You know you're supposed to, I don't, the Lord has really been on me since last night about this, forsake the assembly. Folks, just stop going to church. I ain't going. What's wrong with you? No, you're supposed to go to church. we going to church since you was a baby. And the, the only other out God gave me when I was meditating on this is that if you're following somebody online, uh, you know, following them, and it means you're tithing, you're offering the whole nine. You're not just watching it like, well, I went to church. And trying to eat. See, God knows us. He looks in our hearts. He knows your motives. Verse 3, But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So she knew better. She knew better. Still talking about proximity. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. Half truth. Half truth. Because Adam and Eve, are, they're not going to die. But what's going to die? The, promises of God, the promise of Eden is going to die. They are going to get evicted out of Eden. So he told her half truth. No, Adam and Eve is not going to physically fall over and die. But what's going to die is, your, and for you, your promises die. When you don't do what God has commanded and told you to be, and you're not the place where God, the promises die. Because that's what people say, well, I ain't fall dead, so I must be okay. We have a covenant relationship with God. And when you don't do what the Bible tells you to do, you cannot receive his promises. You have to operate in his principles to receive his promises. In other words, you work 40 hour a week, you get 40 hours for pay. If your check is short, you down and knock on the hey, 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 something's wrong here. I work, so I, my, my, my hours, and that's how it is to the Lord. We have a covenant. You need to obey, excuse me. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed figs, leaves together, and made themselves aprons. See, the scriptures said in the heading, the fall of man, because it's not the fall of Adam and Eve, it's the fall of man. And what the Lord was speaking to me saying when I read that is that for you and your family, when God has given you the word, and he's made you that person in your family, to stand on the word and live the word. And when you don't and you give in to the, to the, to the, to the tricks of the, and deceptions of the de devil, 
Now the enemy has access to your family. You was a person that was holding up the bloodstained banner in your family. And now because you have let that standard down, now the enemy has access to, to, to your children, to your loved ones. It's not just that, that, that fall is, is still going on today. That's why when God was sharing me proximity, you need to be where God has told you to be. That's what the word is. One more, couple more verses of scriptures.